Welcome to yet another one of our Q&A streams uh, for our ongoing uh, Delta Green campaign, Hawthorne's Crusade. Um, I'm going to get our spoiler warning out, like, right now. If you have not caught up, do not watch this stream. Go, go catch up. <laughs> yeah. No, this is very, very true. <laughs> this is... Whether it's your favorite arc we've done so far, it's maybe the most important. A lot happens in Diametrics. It's a long arc for a reason. Um, yeah, it's... So, uh... A spoiler warning, I guess, from here on out. We're going to be talking about the most recent arc, Diametrics. We're going to be answering your questions. And a couple of things to talk about, kind of negative modifier related, and et cetera, et cetera. Yeah! So, Diametrics. Yeah, so I've got the chat up. Uh, so if anybody wants to chime in with questions and all that stuff, I'll keep an eye on that, and we will go over... Uh, we'll do our best to kind of cover what we can without giving any spoilers for future things. But... Um, yeah, uh, I guess if we want to start with a brief rundown of what's uh, happened, fairly. Yes. No, I was going to say, so um, Diametrics is, as you've no doubt learned by now from listening to it, kind of two operations in one. Uh, it's it, it's weird. So when I kind of wrote this thing, kind of got into it, I figured our time in the museum would be pretty short. Like, it's a pretty quick kind of quick burn of, like, question people, find out who's acting weird, find out why they're acting weird, and go from there and kind of then fix the problem. And you guys actually got the cool solution, which is if you destroy the mask without them being there, they go nuts because the mask gets them some, uh, gets the magical feedback on them and the problem kind of solves itself type of thing. Yeah, it's... Uh, I, I thought that was cool. Like, as long as you guys tracked it down through all the kind of crazy turns. And I'm like, okay, we're spending a lot more time here than I thought we were going to. We're getting into the weird stuff I put out in the wings, though, which was fun. Like, I did not expect us to wind up at the doctor's house. I'm like... Oh, cool, I get to use my silly little skeleton gag in the garden. <laughs> Neat. That was one of the best um, fire starter jokes that I was able to throw out there. <laughs> Just grab yeah. No, so, uh, yeah, most of that op most of the operation takes place in the Fraser Museum, which uh, is based off of the Crane Museum attached to the same college. Uh, if you do not get the joke of why we changed the Crane Museum to the Fraser Museum, um, Go figure it out on your own. I'm not to explain that one here. I thought it was a fun swap to avoid us getting on all sorts of trouble. And it's it's a cool museum. Like I felt kind. Of, it's one of those ones where it's easy to, be able to set stuff that happens in the real world in cool places. But at the same time, I feel bad dragging places that are indeed interesting and I'd actually maybe like to go to through the mud with crazy Delta Green antics and you know a murder in their basement. But yeah, yeah. So um, we've actually been cat. Um, we've got. I've been asked a couple times where some of the stuff we run comes from. This is one of the few things we've done for Negative Modifier that actually is kind of in a book. This uh, The mask part of Diametrics is based off, of, what is it, Dylan, like a paragraph or two? Is it uh, Handler's Guide or Agent's yeah, Guide? They've got, I think it's the Agent's Guide that they've got a little, like, um, <laughs> at the beginning of the chapter, you know, they sometimes have those little snippets. And yeah, I'm pretty sure that that's the little snippet on the mask there. Uh, I think it's probably at the start of like the sanity chapter. Yeah, it's it's the smooth mask, um, which yeah. I have been enamored with that like two paragraphs ever since I read it, and I've been trying to find a way of working it in. And yeah, it, it, I think it's interesting that you have this mask out there that kind of just amplifies the deviant behavior in people till they start committing murders because the mask has needs and wants and. I think it's kind of interesting to set kind of just a traditional Delta Green MacGuffin hunt this late in the campaign in some ways, where we've killed an agent with a house, we've uh, fought flesh monsters in basement, we've uh, fought cannibals, we've fought um, a one-man cult that may or may not have had some real connection with a literal god in the setting. So, uh, yeah, let's go find a mask. What's the worst that could happen? You're right. I, to be quite honest, I totally thought um, it was a JoJo's Bizarre Adventure reference. But I kind of figured that this was not going to be the place where that's going to happen. <laughs> it, it, stars aligned kind of was at the end of the day. Like, <laughs> I, I could imagine that the JoJo crowd and the Delta Green crowd were referencing the same historical weirdness because I have found those two kind of, despite being vastly different writing ideas, they kind of overlap in interesting ways where it's like, it's like, yeah, uh, vampires that happen to come from a stone mask. You know, makes sense in both settings, weirdly enough. Each thing has their own interpretation of it, but it's kind of a fun 
if you want to get into kind of the, the larger topics of it, like just start digging, I guess we talked about during the show, during, during the run, I guess you dig into enough cultures and you go far enough back and something just becomes about human sacrifice in one way, shape or form to kind of get the same end and to put that through the Delta green lens. It's like, Oh yeah, it's old one worship or yeah, it's, it's, it, again, it's kind of it's okay. You're trying to like get the attention of something bigger than you, whether you get how that works or not to do something for you. And yeah, it's again, this is where Delta Green gets fun because it gives you a chance to kind of recontextualize is UFC secretly an arcane ritual to appease something? The answer is yes, it always has been. <laughs> Does that make like Joe Rogan a high priest of that, uh, of that sacrifice? Whether he knows it or not, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> He announces it just high priest. Oh, that's great. Yeah, whether they know it or not. Yeah, like this is the this is the Cthulhu mythos. Whether or not you know you're involved in doing something <laughs> terrible does not excuse you being involved. <laughs> oh, that's great. Uh, yeah, so uh diametrics, I think Alex figured this one out and someone else messaged me they'd figured it out. So yeah, diametrics literally means two opposing things, which I hope makes sense to folks why we uh have an operation that's basically about two opposing things at the end. And yeah, I, it's going into this. I had no idea how long this was going to take. Like I figured it'd be more heavy on the back end once you got to the weird house. But at the same time, you guys had been going through the maze enough. And yeah, I, it's it, this one's kind of cool. We didn't get into it because you guys saw it so quickly, but there's a kind of fascinating timetable that happens. There's a bunch of kind of mundane people's life stuff that happens in the background that actually kind of influences who has the mask when you talk to them. So I guess I've got the real spoilery territory. When you talked to Kevin right after the murder happened, he had the mask on him. Really? Yeah. <sighs> that bastard. Huh. Yeah. You know what? I feel like still proud that we were able to get through what we needed to get through or how we got through stuff without using the credentials that we you gave us oh yeah oh yeah 100%. so little little snippet on that one because i brought it up i think after like that whole campaign was done so for those of you who don't know obviously spoilers already be whatnot um we usually get like different credentials for some agency to use and whatnot and i think the ones we had this time around what was uh ice it was ice, it was ice. <laughs> so for those of you who don't know and this is a real life thing um, if you are a hundred miles from water, like in terms of like ocean and all that stuff, ice has almost unlimited power. So they could detain you, they can hold you, they can do whatever they want. And so literally we had what you would consider government cheat codes at this point to do uh, what we wanted to on campus, but we were all kind of like, oh, this feels kind of weird. F still has <laughs> never had credentials this powerful before because the border is right there type of thing. Yeah, it's it's the it's like I've wanted to play around with for a while. We're kind of like in the Delta Green community of talks about okay, how much credentials do you give players? And I've always wanted to kind of play with the idea of mm -hmm. can I give players credentials that like using them will actually make the investigation harder <laughs> because of the public perception of the agency they're impersonating. Like can I cut like, the what, player perception? <laughs> yeah, right? Right? Like, can I like, can I pick an agency that my players will go? We killed someone in a basement of their house, but I have to draw the line somewhere. Like we are right? not doing this. Yeah, it's... Look, we have morals. Okay, we have standards. Yes. Oh, it was we, great. We we uh, yeah. You give us tax? Was it IRS credentials? No problem. You give us any other ones? You got it. Ice. Maybe we should reevaluate how we investigate. Uh, that was kind of a funny, happy accident of I was trying to, like, in research, that it was me trying to figure out, like, okay, what agency would, in theory, be involved in the investigation of antiquity theft? And immediately it's like, I, so I'm like, oh, yeah, they do do that, don't they? Would this work here? Oh, this gets real interesting. Where, like, as Alex was saying, the amount, like, I don't think I will ever give you guys that much potential federal investigatory power ever again. Like, it was, I'm like, let's do this. Like, let's give them so much power that if they choose to use it, like, it just steamrolls everything. But also, let's try and frame it in a way that makes everyone not want to use this cheat code they have. And then they don't even realize it's a cheat code until, like, we're done with it, where it's like, oh, shit, that was actually, like, really useful, potentially. But yeah, it as you guys kind of sussed it on your own, 
a variety of the people there would not have had would not have reacted favorably to being co- uh, interrogated by ICE agents and would have been a lot harder to talk to. Yep. Despite all the cheat code power it has, it would have made things actually more difficult, which is kind of oh, yeah, funny. Saeed is far less talkable, is far less talkative when. Yeah. Yeah. Although if you wanted to be the... dickish, he's like, oh, if you don't feel like talking, we'll just hang out here for a couple days. No problem. And there would be no qualm to it because technically well, they can. To counteract can. that, there is a, uh, you guys didn't get to it, but there is a, every number of days that pass, more, more murders happen. Like it's, yeah. I guess that's actually one thing you guys, could, you guys didn't get into that you could have. That wasn't the first set of murders. Those were just the first set of murders that happened at the museum. If you kind of mm. bumped into the police and asked some questions, it's like, yeah, we have these homeless people that keep showing up, like, slashed ribbons, which is strange. Hmm. Okay. And it's kind of, kind of places that it's all, it's all attack of opportunities. They all, like, the, the couple is not good at committing crimes. They It's like, it's all happening. with like, wow, it's like, Within a 10 minute walk of the one person's address. That's oddly specific. Yeah. And correct me if I'm wrong, uh, at least as far as character development stuff goes. Is this the first time my character developed paranoia was in the museum chapter? Uh, this was the first one you had active paranoia. Yes, yes. that's yeah. right. Okay. It was very fitting. Yeah. Very fitting. I. Yeah. As I've said the entire run of this, just because you can't prove I'm messing with you doesn't mean I'm not messing with you. Yeah. No, it's uh, the the yeah. This is kind of when stuff starts coming full circle. Like we have the box from uh, Cairo and Porting show up. It's basically like, "Hi, remember me? Did you have fun in Atlanta? We're back on this bullshit, by the way." Oh man. So, well, I guess just to kind of streamline it, um. Let's do a quick like rundown timeline wise of this chapter. So we end up, uh, well, I forget the name of Charlie. You know the campaign better than I do. I just kind of played along with it, but go ahead. No, this one's diametrics. Yeah, so it starts off with um, I guess how much timeline do you want to go through? Why kind of everything up till this point to recap real quick and how it ties back in? No, or... just this chapter. Like, let's do just like yeah. a quick notes run of this chapter. Like when we started this. All right, so we should probably talk about this because it does kind of tie into the ending, the, the final words of Diametrics 2. So, yeah, you guys went up in Michigan, you have your meeting with Pine, and that starts the Pine Clock, where you guys may have noticed that you had access to Pine up until you didn't. And that was me kind of being like, okay, it's X number of days in the background have to pass before uh, Pine gets herself in trouble. And that kind of lined up perfectly with, hey, you're on a plane. Sometime that evening while you were flying, something bad happened, probably. Or that's kind of when the infection started, and mm. she does her job up till she can't. But yeah, so, went up in Michigan, we have our whole Starbucks stuff. You get your briefing, you get your credentials, you had some questions, you did some kind of preliminary legwork. Then we had day two, which was the green boxes and the introduction of our third super secret, possibly super terrible ending for a character with uh, Mr. Frosty. <laughs> That's right! That was the introduction to Mr. Frosty! Oh no. This is Mr. This is the Mr. Frosty arc. Yes. Yeah, so much happens in Diametrics. Uh we have we have the Mr. Frosty truck, which so if you're if, if you're curious what the mechanics are for the truck, the truck became a green box because they couldn't figure out a way to get the uniform out of the box or out of the truck without the whole kind of Mr. Frosty thing kicking up. So their solution was hey, we'll just bury the truck in a junkyard and turn it into a green box, and so long as no one removes the clothing out of it, it'll be fine, except the it's, truck has a mild mind of its own. That's that's honestly smart. Question, is this retribution for every single time the ice cream truck would roll through our recording sessions? <laughs> I'm not going to say... <laughs> I'm not going to say no, but I'm not going to say yes. The idea definitely got in there of me, like, editing out so much... Uh, fucking ice cream truck music where I'm like how do I make this an eldritch thing <laughs> oh it's about that yeah I mostly was a kind of I I wanted to have something like that in diametrics we had the ice cream stuff happen so it got changed over to that but also like I, where I grew up we had a collection of some of the most like sweet tooth esque uh, twisted metal looking ice cream trucks when I was growing up to the point where it was like I, I want ice cream but I don't want to die go right there. No, that truck is obviously run by a serial killer of some kind. Like, the art on the side has not been touched since it was painted in, like, sacrificial blood, so... 
it's always been the back of my brain of like, how do you have a Delta Green ice cream truck and the uh, Mr. Frosty truck is great star presence. But yeah, so I guess kind of like my reference to that has been there are now th- three of the possible super secret dark endings have been unlocked. Um, We'll have to see how those all play out. There are there were some several endings that kind of had some criteria that had to happen before they could happen, but uh, yeah. We get into those real soon in the next hour, by the way. Those, some hints at what may or may not come at the end of those are dropped real quick, which if you've been curious, like, what the cowbell's been up to, you get told what the cowbell's been up to. Yes, we do. This is yeah. why we don't touch things in green boxes. But also, yeah. you absolutely touch things absolutely, in green boxes. 100%. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I did it, too. Like, early on, I took a book from a green box. I just got lucky. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. the book for the Elder Shot, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And this is yet again another point in the campaign where Elder Shot was used, but there's also the question of if it did anything. It's like, does this stuff even work? We're not sure. Your mileage will vary. Yes. <laughs> How does it work? Shooting windows, it works. Shooting a mask, it works. Maybe shooting something a little bit, you know, alive might not work. We'll find out. Or maybe we won't. But yeah, so we have the Fraser Institute or the Fraser Museum. You made your way through there. It was, it's interesting. So it was kind of like we're slowing it down to do a MacGuffin hunt, which is what a lot of Delta Green stuff happens to be. It's artifacts. It's very kind of traditional investigatory talking to people, figuring out weird behaviors, a couple red herrings threw in there that you guys picked up on. Like, this is strange, but maybe not that strange. But no, this is totally strange. It was kind of fun watching the loops on that. I think it made into the cut content thing, which is up on the Patreon. You guys going, well, we had a, we had a cannibal cult at one point, so of course it's a sex cult this time around. <laughs> The two times, or yeah, the, the only two times that my character's actual investigatory skills have paid off was me saying, eh, it's either a sex cult or a cannibal cult, and then this one being, oh no, this has got to be the sex cult. Beyond that, my character's an idiot detective. I'm just there for the for the manpower at this point. Like, And actually, it's funny, um, I think it was this first time in this like this particular chapter I legit felt like I had no idea like where the story was going in terms of like how could I investigate. So I was just yeah. like I was just like I'm gonna stand here with my arms crossed, and if there's trouble, I'll do something. But in the meantime, I'll let the brains do their work because I had no idea. Out <laughs> yeah, it must be nice being the first time where you're just like I don't know what's gonna fucking happen because that happened to me with like that's been that's been since like uh, Washington. <laughs> It's been since the 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 death cabin. Like I have no. Oh idea. yeah, Vermont. <laughs> How does this work? Who knows? Uh, I always feel so uh, anxious whenever there's like the detective portions of it because I always feel as if like I'm just like not even looking at the right spot. You have kept us on our goddamn toes this entire like way so far. Hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's the goal. Let's try to make it interesting in that regard. Yeah, and I also like, e- like even if there are moments where like maybe I have something kind of figured out, I don't know if it feels like if it's going again or if I'm going meta, but like my character wouldn't have figured this out. But me as a person, yeah, I've kind of figured this out. So there's that weird balance of like, do I say something because I kind of have an idea, or do I not? Because my character really wouldn't have figured this out. Is that is that like a weird feeling to have when I don't know that maybe that's normal, just the... I think yeah it's the okay as someone who builds characters and they get to play Delta Green specifically so I can use my weird knowledge of stuff and like the fact I run this game it's like okay I have to take certain things to penalize the fact that I'm gonna be like oh it's probably this how do you know because I've also read the handler's guide yeah. Yeah, I know just enough about Delta Green where I can pick out a couple of things and, you know, the Cthulhu mythos, but I came in mostly blind to it as well. As is the correct way to play Delta Green in my perspective. Like, the less you know about the mythos, I always find the more fun it is because there's no conceived notions of what has to be what or, like, how you can use things. Like, going back to j Alligator Deep Ones is fun. If you're kind of caught up on exactly what Deep Ones are, you're never going to go, but it's a Deep One in the swamp. And that's just a silly thing I want to see happen. Yeah. Uh, 
I like to think about just how far I've come as a player to understand and kind of like integrate myself into the Delta Green like mindset. The like, horrible the, mindset. <laughs> the horrible mindset. Wendigo, Wendigo Firestarter versus uh, Diametrics Firestarter. Completely two different people. <laughs> I mean, we'll tell the Wendigo story next time we do one of these streams. Uh, it's finally time we got to that, I suppose. So we teased it on long enough. Yeah. But yeah. So. It's a good one. Yeah. Yeah, MacGuffin found, uh, mask broken, Sandy checks, not totally botched. Um, yeah, the, the mask wants to be worshipped. It kind of makes people do bad things. It's in the kind of same theme of whoever's behind all of this stuff. Um, they get that they can use unnatural stuff to take agents off the board, but this is when we start getting some hints that like either they understand how this stuff works way too well, or they're just kind of like have a fistful of grenades. They pull the pins and go grenades and see what kind of sticks and what doesn't work. And it's like, well, we get, very, we get into this very kind of early on in the next arc, but kind of the idea of, okay, what's doing this and how are they doing this? Like, it's the idea of, yeah, going up against Delta Green, that's a problem. Going up against civilians that are going to do something stupid like release a bug swarm into a homeless camp because they were told it will get rid of it or kind of like, skirt the edges but yeah i got some blood on a mask by accident how big a deal could it be cut to you want to murder people and you have no idea why type of thing like yeah it's weaponizing the people around things is much easier than going directly after delta green because delta green doesn't exist and it's just people that show up to deal with stuff so you have to make sense for them to deal with type of thing uh it's a kind of one fun easter egg of this arc there are a shit ton of references to the show Bones throughout all of it, the point where my wife, who was a huge Bones fan, was listening to us go through this, and one night she's like, are you running a Bones op or something? And I'm like, yes, yes we are. She's like, oh, I take back every mean thing I had to say about this then. <laughs> oh, Is that's Bones good. Go with, like, Zoe Deschanel's sister? Uh, I thought maybe? Bones had no. Angel from Buffy. Yes, that's the one, oh. to the point where uh, the uh, to the person in charge of the Fraser Institute is just the two main characters of Bones' names mashed together, hence why it's Seeley Brennan. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> A bunch of the grad students have their names pulled directly from Bones as well, just because I'm like, yeah, let's do something silly. I, we did Longmire in Vermont, let's do Bones for this, because it's very that type of setting. It's very kind of the archaeological aspects of it. A lot of the mm -hmm. ideas I had of what the people would be doing and kind of what the interest would be definitely came from that. It's still Delta Greenified and kind of some of the kitsch factor turned through the roof. But yes, if if you were going through that going, this feels like Bones, congratulations, it was. <laughs> did you uh, did you think that we would follow, or no, you already said that you didn't have, um, you didn't expect us to follow the trajectory that we did. Um, with this arc, like, what was the exp or what did you kind of think that we were going to do necessarily with this like puzzle that you gave us? Well, like, so this is this is one of those ones where kind of like I know how I would solve this, but also I think of how I'd solve that through like the tranche approach, and that's through kind of aggressive interrogations and threats to a certain extent, like that. That's mm. You get halfway through kind of talking to Saeed and just slap the ice credentials down the table and go, what the hell is weird going on here? Like, let's make this real uncomfortable for everyone involved type of thing. Like the and, and yeah, it's, it's one of those things where kind of like it's the, the fact that there are so many ways of solving these things. Like it's one of those ones where my first instinct is always go, Okay, we have credentials, let's use them to tap into the local PD and be like, Hey, anything weird happening now? Because there have been a chain of unexplained murders. It's like, oh, a bunch of homeless people keep getting hit by snow plows. That's weird and unfortunate, but how often does that happen? Do you want to see one? They kind of get all sliced up more than normal type of thing. Yeah, it, it's one of those ones where I think, you, in my mind, you can solve the entire thing without ever leaving the museum, which is true, because you can catch Kevin with the mask, and then you can catch um, Wick with the mask. There are points in time where they have the mask physically on them or in a backpack or something, where, like, if you just search them at that point in time, it's there. Like, and it's like, why do you have the mask? Uh... Yeah, yeah, it's I only have a ch I had a chart of kind of the timeline of where the mask where it's like, okay, it's on this person at the apartment, 
on this person back at the apartment on this person again right and it's just kind of a clockwork thing of depending on what point that, that's why kind of if you, keep, if you go back and listen it's why i'm so kind of like okay you spent about half a day doing this that makes about sense like okay so you're way away it looks like about noon now or something there's a lot of kind of establishing the timeline where stuff is and isn't and yeah the, the murders do have a cool and off period where they get the mask out it goes back to their apartment it kind of stays there for a couple of days and actually kind of the I had, I think, it was about two and a half weeks of the escalation where, as you get towards the end, they get sloppier and more stuff starts happening in rapid fire and they get way worse at being secretive about it because it's just two people trying to take the brunt of a mask that, like, doesn't understand human levels of condition. And, uh, yeah, I think it's like, if it's you guys picked up on some important stuff, like the fact that they had these kind of rashes on their faces, mm-hmm. it is because they're putting the mask on, the mask sticks onto their face, and Huh. It's doing kind of creepy mask stuff. I I kind of missed a lot of that stuff because for whatever reason, I thought just two co-eds, coll- collegiate co-eds, just violently fucking um, was like an okay and normal thing. That, that would it happen. is. It's a yeah. normal thing. It's also designed to be a red herring. Like I know the group I'm playing with. I know the kind of also like, no, it's high stress environment. I've worked in those ones where it's like, you do dumb stuff to make yourself feel better. So yeah, it's a you guys kind of ran into the red herring of like, oh, here's a completely plausible explanation of like everything about these characters that's suspicious, and then you have Saeed going like, no, no, it is suspicious. See, and I think like we, I made this joke earlier um, uh, during the actual like playing of the campaign, but like in my head after we kind of figured everything out, I was like. I could have kink shamed a little bit and come to a conclusion much faster. <laughs> if I had to stay in my my oh, yeah. of like no ice and no kink shaming. <laughs> yeah, I, no, it, it's one of those ones where kind of like it's the it's how you knock it's how you knock down the dungeons at that point. Like it's you got to the solution. Like it's yeah, you it's like you could totally be suspicious and like make the somewhat logical but also completely implausible logical leap of like bdsm couples the murderers because satanic panic i guess like there there's a for the right federal investigator that jump exists there and it's a dumb jump that people in the real life make all the time but Mm. in this case it was correct at the same time that like comparing vicky to our boy in a weirdwood what was correct and what was the correct decision in those types of moments who knows the solutions are what happened to everything. Again, I wouldn't change anything but how it went down. I think the fact that we got the full, like, oh, that makes sense. Oh, no, they're murderers. I'm just happy it wasn't Eggsy. Like, I, I like Eggsy. It was good. That's, that's a great character. Yeah. Did anyone figure out why Eggs' name was, uh, nickname was Eggs? It's Benedict, right? Yeah, yeah, so okay. yes. A nickname I have loved to show up in True Blood. And I'm like, I'm going to use this for a character that, like, if someone dies, they get to play eggs. Let's make this character cool. He's got a bad agility score, but he's actually quite good at his job type of thing. He's a cool character that I'm glad he came off as interesting. We're like, no, no, you want him to be a good guy. Like, he is trying to do good. And Delta Green's like, mm, maybe you'll join us, maybe you won't. But also, like, here, smash stuff in the basement of this museum when it gets too creepy. sledgehammer yeah yeah i he's he's one of the most important people out there in theory like if i don't got to play me at the whole backstory of the number of like potentially unnatural outbreaks eggs has single-handedly stopped because it was like oh no i've knocked over this urn that contains some weird powder and now it's in the now it's in the dust collection system and i threw that out and burned it immediately oh how tragic <laughs> whoops Man, there was some weird alien blood on that knife I threw in the garbage and then threw the garbage off a bridge into the river. Hmm. Yeah. Shout outs to Eggsy. Yeah, and <laughs> no, it's no, yeah. Then the first chunk of diametrics is very straightforward. Again, like we've had some kind of crazy twisty turny stuff. I wanted to kind of lead into the end of diametrics with something that's a little bit more grounded like it, it could have been something bigger but it's like no it's just an artifact hunt like let's go with we're bringing the antagonist back into the fold like they're like hey we remember you do you remember us like here's this obviously a trap set of addresses on the box let's bring back the francis facts it's like okay yeah they're they're using this address to ship stuff out at best that means francis is maybe a member of this which sucks at worst, something way, way worse is going on. 
let's go find out. Mm. Yeah. I really like the way you tied in the loss of a player. Um, yes. Into like the uh, like overarching aspect or overarching story. Like, was that part of like, or did it just give you a vehicle of like, okay, cool, this is how I'm going to deliver this revelation, or was it more so like? Bit of A, bit of B. Like, it's one of those ones where kind of just setting this whole thing up, I had to have a contingency for if Francis had to leave because of the time zone stuff. And it was like, mm -hmm. okay, if that happens, I have a way of writing them out, which is kind of like, you, you have your first off-screen interaction with the opposition where they kind of take him off the board. It's a very kind of clean thing. It's like, okay, how do you bring Francis back? I don't want him forgotten because he was a character people liked. He was there. He was there for two operations. Like, and he is part of this, maybe on active parts. Like, okay, what would this thing you guys are going up against do? And as kind of I was working through, and like if there's, a, if there's a couple of the locations could have shown up at, like it was actually going to be potentially like one of the places you've already been kind of thing, but it's like, no, nah, send opportunity, but okay, cool. We can just put the house in a Delta Green Agent's house, which arguably makes it so much worse because going back to kind of the topic of what happens at the end of Diametrics, I love messing with how the home scenes work, like because they are functionally this kind of safe space for players. Like there's only so much bad that can happen to you in the home scenes mechanically. Like I can break the rules and go all kind of off on them and make them weird. But the idea of you're kind of playing a home scene, you're going home, you're going to an agent's house. It's the least safe place you've been the entire campaign. It's not just like unsafe. It's an active trap. It's not just like, a bear trap that's the size of a house. It is everything Delta Green's afraid of, which is methodical, clear, concise, well done cataloging of everything you've done wrong. That's like, we're the good guys. No, no, you're not. Here's our dossier on why you're not. Like, we're, we're aware of it. It's everything you've done. Don't you dare pretend that, like, this is some greater good bullshit. Mm -hmm. Speaking of home scenes, I did not know that home scenes can go wrong. And so the shock and betrayal of not only the Francis, but the AA meeting really just rocked me to my core. Absolutely. Yeah. Gee. Yeah. And we'll get to that in a second too. Cause I think the ending kind of say, I gave you guys a warning. Okay. We're going to do normal home scenes. We're going to do a little bit extra after that because we have to set up the kind of, the, the, I think of the kind, like it's, it's weird. We have a, five word finale or not finale, but kind of like if you use that kind of literary, triangle shape of like building action building action climax and everything else is fallout from that we have a five word climax of pine's dead we're extracting four words five words like it's it's designed to kind of do this big moment where just it's like okay everything is fundamentally changed but mm -hmm. and it's like it's like if you kind of go back to the house and kind of listen to and you're thinking about kind of what's going on you can't get a hold of pine your phones are compromised like it's the thing is actively working its way into your life, if that makes any sense. Like, it's infected your phone, it's infected your car. Like, every tool you use that's electronic is getting messed with by this thing. And then you go into a house and it's dossiers and cables and a collection of toy guns inside of a Delta Green Go bag because it's literally toying with you. Oh, yeah. So I think I had a message, I shared the chat with you guys, but a friend of mine named Doug actually, when he listened to that ending, he was like, dude, was, did not see that coming. He was so amped up and he was like, it was so good. And like, I think that really honestly reflects our reaction as well, because I think we were legit dumbfounded when it all went down. 100%. Yeah. It came out of left field. Yeah, the, the entire kind of house to conclusion of Diametrics is just roller coaster ride, full speed ahead. Like, you have to, it's like, it's, it's designed to be just kind of like you have to go in to get, kind of give yourself over to the chain of events and just let go and try and survive. Like, I, yeah, that, mentally okay. the goal, yeah, you go, go, you go, go. Sorry, the, the whole last, like, part from the house to Pine's Dead was just, like, a consistent of what the hell is going on. Yeah, that whole sequence, yeah, just, yeah, no, for sure. It was, it was just, it was like, wait, what? And then we were just, like, I remember it was just quiet as we were listening to stuff, like, happening, and we were kind of getting through it. We were all just so, like, focused, like, what's happening? 
because we went to the house and we're like what the hell is going on we got into the house and it's like what's going on and then the house is trying to kill us then we get out <laughs> and we're safe but we're like we shouldn't split up right yeah and then you know pine's dead house blows up yeah it's it's designed to be kind of a thrill ride of horrors at that point yeah it's kind of and I was lucky enough to give me a great backstory of Florence's whole musical past that's actually a murder weapon type of thing. Like, it's the... I, it's one of those things where kind of like it's the... In setting up who our final opposition is, kind of our, our, our antagonist to be all, it's like, you no, know, of course they found out about this, and of course they found a way to make it so much worse than this weird sound-based virus Florence encountered. And, of course, in their kind of dumb hubris, they're going to go... We're going to use it against you because you think you dealt with this once. I, you know, it's actually now that reminds me. Florence is usually the very level-headed character, but to watch Florence's character freak out at the like at something from her past coming back to haunt her was also like for me it was kind of like oh shit this is really serious because Florence is very level-headed and to have something le- like something legit like luster or just startle florence okay something really bad is gonna happen because florence is yeah. of all of us sh- she's the level-headed one she's the very calm cool collected one and to have that happen was like oh shit oh no oh somebody's gonna die no oh <laughs> uh, we were we were about like what we were i think two crits in that house yeah. saved us uh yeah no the 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 house is supposed to be on paper is a lot more deadly than it got to be. Like it is capable of just <coughs> reading characters on paper, but mm. as I <laughs> dictated, we got out. Uh, people survived. Um, as I like to say, I have no regrets at how it turned out. Like the just frantic escape from the cable tentacle house is just, it's fun. Like it is Delta Ned's best. Like it is, Oh god, oh god, oh god, out the window, uh, the window's closing in, what do we do, what do we do? Why are the cat six cables trying to kill us? Finding out that my character bane is literally unnatural, aggressive real estate. (laughs) I have... The ghost of Father Fumble is, like, here. (laughs) He's with us. Yeah, this was the, this was when we started using the phrase, the curse of Father Fumble, I think, like, in recordings, (laughs) like, I cut that out in editing, but like, if if there's a moment you go, God damn, Jad is cursed, we definitely talked about that. We're like, oh, it's the curse of Father Fumble again. Yeah, I mean, every time we fumbled from like there on out, I think there was always a mention of Father Fumble. Yeah. 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 yeah this is real. So, I think on this one, was it my dodge crit, or there was like, there was, was it one of my crits that like ended up saving us on that one? Yeah, there was a couple. There was, there was... um, yeah, there's a dodge crit, if I remember correctly. Yeah. There was, a, there was a dodge and then a basically throwing fire starter out the window, crit, if I remember correctly. Yeah, because there was the uh, it was fire starter and Florence got grabbed by the tentacles. Fire yeah. starter was able to get out. You crit to get Florence. No, no. Out. Fire starter got the disease in him, right. so he was fully really incapacitated. That's right. right. So yeah. You That's... got Florence I... out. <laughs> right. I fumbled and then I caught. Face disease. I don't know. <laughs> and then you crit to get him out as well, I believe. And Florence had ran up to the window and did an unarmed crit to get the window open. For yeah, us. that's right. Yeah, I don't know how that worked, <laughs> but she kind of managed to martial art the window open or kind of the window further open, which dealt means fun that way. Where it's like I, I don't know, like backflip through, knocking some of the window hanging out. I guess screw it. After Ooh. getting kicked square in the chest by a fire starter launching you across the room. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <him down. laughs> oh, yeah. Man. It was just one pump of adrenaline all the way up until, like, you know, we got to the home scene. And we were like, okay, we can calm down a little bit. Everything's fine. And then gunshots, pine's yeah. dead. Boom. Great. Oh, no, I thought I even said, like, hey, we're going to do home scenes. And then we're going to do something after the home scenes. Just kind of go with it without any useful details whatsoever. Yeah. And yeah. Again, like it's. Don't forget about Florence's peak main character energy where everyone's tr- like we somehow was able to avoid a really rough drive check because you ran out screaming from the house 
with like the most authoritative voice that you've ever had in your life to dissipate a large crowd who come to gather around the house after they finally start noticing everything that's going down. That's just like, I didn't even I talk get, about that. Like, I yeah, I get back in your house. I was just like, that was badass. That was such a badass moment. Yeah, I had forgot. I, I that, forgot, but... and I, I forgot. This will introduce the kind of you can't look at the house directly mechanic that becomes quite a thing. But I forgot this was the first time that hey, it's an infected thing that no one seems to notice is infected. That's so much worse than anything else we've come across so far. That's that's the one we had to use the mirrors for, right? No, that's that's a spoiler. I guess that's later. That's uh, okay. That's Philly. That, that's like yeah, that's down the road. Okay. Oops, you didn't hear that. Yeah. No. We... This is the one where Florence um, tried using her god hand and like burnt it to a crisp. Died, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. That's yeah, right. it's, there are so many threads that kind of finally get tied off in the end of Diametrics in the House of Diametrics. Like Delta Green's even vague about what the Elder Sign looks like, because there are canonically two designs out there, depending on which Mythos book you're reading. And I've always had in the background. I'm like. <laughs> Does any of Florence's Elder Sign stuff even actually work, or is it just kind of like dumb belief or other stuff we will get into further down the road, or just like dumb luck kicking in type of thing? Like, how much of it actually, like, do the Elder Bullets even work? Does the hand thing even work? Like, we don't know, honestly. And this was kind of, it's like, no, it, it does something, but also, like, in the Love Community, this whole topic of, like, Oh, just elder shot bullet solves today, and I'm like, no, it doesn't. Like, just painting a symbol on a bullet does not make it immediately kill monsters instantly. You still put the willpower behind it, and like, yeah, it might kill a deep one or maybe even like a uh, hunting horror or something. A house that's made up of an infested by evil cat six cables has a little bit more willpower than a human being. Yeah, that's accurate. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, so it's funny you say that, because the way I've always thought of the Elder Sign symbol is they've got those two designs, but I never yeah. thought that it was the actual symbol that works it, but more like the willpower of the That's how I've always interpreted it, too, yeah. 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 So it's you, like... it could be, like, anything, but you have to have the right, like, idea. Yeah, it, to kind of take it broad to the hypergeometric kind of themes of Delta Green, anything works if you believe in it the right way. Just having the Elder Sign gets your mind into believing it will work. But, like, on paper, you can banish Cthulhu with a spork, but you have to really believe it's gonna work. The fuck out of here, Cthulhu. Yeah, I probably won't work, but hypothetically, like, if you believed enough and had enough juice behind it, you could maybe do it, but also probably not, because that's not how any of this stuff works. It never works the way you want it to. Yeah, I probably kind of agree. It's a kind of faith idea of, I believe this works, therefore it does. And the mm -hmm. Elder Sign gets you at least kind of tapping into the reality bending. I believe it works, so it does. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the, I guess, question here. Um, when we did the home scenes for that, as I recall, my character didn't go back home, right? Yeah, no one went back home. Yeah. yeah. This was the kind of introduction of this is where I differ from the book some. A lot of people like to run Delta Green where it's very, like, home scenes have to be very strict and, like, they're very in-depth. It's like, no. I, as someone who traveled a lot for work, you can maintain a relationship via phone or Skype, long-distance type of thing. Like, there are ample ways to go about your mental health needs on remote work type of thing. And father, and fire, and fire, yeah. Foxtrot's case, it was trying to seek some therapy via the psychological services offered either to CIA agents or just kind of finding a therapist. Like it's a weird one where like we live in an era of telehealth. There are goddamn apps you can download to find like therapists. And like in hindsight, I'm like, no, no, that's who Delta Green would use anonymous, like no face app based therapist. So they could be like, yo, must have some crazy shit now. And there's nothing you can do. Cause you don't know who I am. And I bought a burner for this. Like, <laughs> it's an idea that like in my head like it's when we go through some of this stuff i'm like okay like if they say tell how how this works i'm like i'll give a fucking plus 80 to that <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll get that up that luck up to an 80 because you can just like hey are you ever meet me again no cool deep ones are real the life of the, the world is a thresher maw <laughs> your lambs in the cosmic slaughter type of thing and they can be like oh it's a crazy new book i've got that off my chest 
I feel better now. Next time you log into the app, your account has been suspended for terms of use violations. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But at the same time, like, who the hell cares at that point? You got what you need to do. The person on the other end's like, what's that? Well, is that like, what? That was a weirdo type of thing. Like, like, what does therapy even actually do? And don't you get to talk to your problems? Like, yeah, but also like your problem is that reality is ending and you're the thing holding the second hand from kicking forward. There's no fixing that. There's just kind of spackle and band-aiding over that, just having the joy of saying, Mm. I stopped the apocalypse. And how does that make you feel? Tired. We all feel <laughs> tired from work. And it's coming again tomorrow. Yeah, it's... And there's a new one on deck constantly. Yeah, it... that was the one where uh, Firestarter went to uh, the AA group, and that just did not go well. No, not at all. I love the... I love how this was also such a main character moment for... Um fucking uh florence because the revelation of the apocalypse broke uh foxtrot um and developed or foxtrot started developing like paranoia or paranoia oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. Having, he, he had paranoia by the end of this i think you have a second disorder that kicks in the next star yeah yes uh, it's a fun one i i in hindsight, I've come really around. I'm like, no, that was fun that that happened with that character. Are we? Or we we'll talk about it next time then, because they went on to spoil that. Oh yeah, no, that, that's, okay. we'll, we'll do a teaser to Malin, but yes, no. Yes. I've... And then like the fire started. I don't. I honestly can't remember exactly what happened, but I'm pretty sure like I lost whatever grip of sanity. But like Florence gained sanity from. <laughs> It was the it was when we were in the museum and we were like digging through a computer and we found that symbol and realized that like we had been being watched this entire time. Yeah, the security glitches are somewhat manually fucking with the security system watching this kind of whole mouse trap it set up play out type of thing. Like it's like, oh yeah, you you yes, of course it's you're being watched. Did oh, I yeah. bomb it into a bucket? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's that's what I was there, there we go trash can yes yep oh my paranoia rolls were very accurate it seemed then <laughs> I... your paranoia... that was gonna... or i was gonna say your paranoia paranoia rolls are the reason why we even like were suspicious of um uh that roommate <laughs> that's right oh man yeah and like it was funny too because like we were talking about like well what what like weird disorder should i get and i'm like paranoia seems like what was it i think we were discussing it after the game and we're like, well, what would kind of work for my character? And I remember somebody had mentioned, oh, like, oh, yeah, paranoia is on there. Like, that one could work. I'm like, yeah, that, that, that tracks for a CIA agent. That works. And it just did end up working out so well. Yeah, no, I think it was me being like, oh, you should do paranoia. That one will fit for what, like, that one makes sense for Sage. And you're like, yeah, it was me in the back of my brain. Like, take paranoia, take paranoia. <laughs> it fits. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, no, that was. Yeah, that was. Yeah, no, this whole that whole chapter was just. Yeah, I'll definitely my fun. <laughs> we walked up. Let's talk about the finale type of thing. Like, it's it's one of those ones where I've been wanting to blow up Florence's house for a little bit. I'm not sure why it was like the character with the happiest home life. I'm like, no, no, I want to blow their house up. How do we do this? Like. How do we kind of really drive home the idea that whatever this thing is, it's got its tendrils into you deep. It's coming for your personal life. And I think we talked about this vaguely as part of it. Like I was up. Oh, no, that comes up next season. But yeah, no, it's smart listeners. And you guys as players figured out that like, huh, this time gap happened. And then we all had really easy bonds to make. That's suspicious. Yes, that's right. I never pieced that together. Oh, my God. Yeah, oh, no. I think I Oh, go ahead. Or, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, you go. I think I had told Charlie, but uh, once it had all been revealed and everything, I was like, yeah, in the beginning when uh, Florence came home and saw that woman, like, my immediately immediate thought was like, oh, this is some kind of plant. But <laughs> Florence isn't willing to just murder somebody because of a theory. <laughs> I thought Indeed. Charlie was being kind. <laughs> 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 I thought, I thought, it was like, oh, cool. Fire's probably going to be boyfriend. He's whatever the heck. He has a new bond. I was like, sweet. Like, sweet deal. Like, I will absolutely take this without any kind of question because this is useful to me. And this yeah. will help to make sure that this character does not die. Wow. 
as, as I recall from my bond, didn't I fail the first time? Yes. With that? Yes. <laughs> Which is so fitting for, for freaking uh, Foxtrot. Can't even befriend a sleeper agent. And I think he just ended up giving it to me as a, like a gimme, but it was like a low bond or something, right? Oh yeah, no, yeah, yes. Yeah. So I gave you a bonus for it. So I'm like, no, you are like, it's me, my brain. Like, how do I get this? Like, like, hey, how do I get Alex a new bond? But also, how do I get at least one of these people in as sleepers? Yeah, and as, as I many of these sleepers in as possible. And as I recall, the bond was so indirect. Like, I didn't even know the neighbor's name. Yeah, they were neighbor. just it called neighbor the neighbor. Friend. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yes, that makes sense for Foxtrot completely, yes. Oh, yeah. man. And I guess kind of a fun thing we can talk about in the stream. So we got to go through the Florence extraction, which I managed to expand to kind of include all of you. You each had kind of little scenes of T-cell of, of T showing up and basically pulling you guys out in kind of various interesting states, if you will, like in a uh, five. Firestarter's case was not you're gonna be at the bar and T cell was gonna basically agree, uh, approach you in the bathroom being like, you need to leave right now. Yeah, and I I was with Florence when the attraction happened. Yeah, all three of you were there. Yep, yeah, okay. Yeah. But I, yeah. I was not prepared for all three of you being in the same. I'm like, oh no, that's actually kind of cool. Like they're 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 I've beaten them up so much, they're so friendly, they won't leave each other's side. I'm like, oh no, we're going we're all going to Atlanta now. And I'm like that actually makes this simpler because Tranche was going to show up and extract Florence personally. The other ones were going to have little fun moments. But no, I can throw all of T Cell at blowing up Florence's house now. Yeah, I for some reason I keep thinking uh, Jad wasn't there, like his character, because you were in another room, is yes. what it was. And I kept confusing that that somehow you weren't there. But yeah, that's what it was. You were in another room in the house, as I recall. Yeah, yeah. So that makes sense. Okay. I mean, hell, I think even then I made that confusion, and even now I'm making the same confusion that you were, like, there, but in another room. Because I think... The other uh, room changes all of it, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, we all got that text at the same time. Yeah. Mm. Of just, like, drop, and then just the entire place just got ripped. I totally just was... I forgot that I wasn't in another room as well, so when you were talking about how Foxtrot and Florence got extracted, I was like, what happened to Firestar? <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. Yeah. So I got to ask, like, when you, like, I know kind of canonically you all went along with it, but like when I'm telling you, hey, you got text messages, hit the deck, what were people's reactions, I guess, to that? Because it's such a weird moment of drop for cover in the text. Uh, I would I, say, oh, go ahead. You go first. Oh, I was going to say, like, especially as a former member of T Cell, like, I feel like Firestarter would just be like, all right, cool. Damn. Uh, for my character, considering that, like, in his field that he might have been shot at several times and there are situations where somebody calls for you to drop, I would have just been like, okay, and just drop. Like, there would have yeah. been any any confusion there. That being said, in real life, growing up in SoCal, if someone sent me a message that said drop, I would be on the ground before the message finished pinging. Like, as, as we're good. Uh... <laughs> I mean, the only reason I think Florence did it is because she, it was coming from the contact number she had for Tranche. Otherwise, she would have been like, what? Drop? Excuse me? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, that scene was oh, yeah. such a mindfuck. I, oh, well, man. It was, it's, well, it's one of those things where kind of like it's my self serving this where it's like, Tranche has been on the back corner for a while. She's kind of had some clerical work where she should at the very beginning. There's been references to her being unhinged. It's me being like, no, no. Tranche is very good at this Delta Green stuff. How do we bring her back into this to kind of, A, set up the rest of this campaign, and B, kind of set up what happens beyond, if you will. And I'm like, oh, yeah. We're going to have Call of Duty moment with this some, where it's like, what is going on? Tranche is here. Don't worry about it. Yeah, and I think the campaign like legit ends with Tranche saying, like, Pine's dead, we're extracting you. And that's yeah, it, that's right? The that's that's the end of the arc, and then we go into our final chapter, the longest chapter of this. The yes, I. If this winds up being ten plus episodes long, I will not be surprised. It is a hefty chapter. It is uh, two chapters in one again. They kind of mesh together. It's an expansion on the house. At one point, the house is going to kind of be part of this kind of final stretch. But I kind of kept this part of diametrics, but yes. 
that next chapter was ugh. yeah yeah we we thought the action got crazy when we had that extraction point moment but like no, oh no I, as i as i've been telling people online and kind of they ask about like where does it go from here and i'm like so the ending of diametrics is like a baseline for how just crazy everything from here on out goes like if you thought the house was cool we got plenty of more of that same cool coming for you. Like it's, it's weird to say it, but like the entire campaign is building towards, as I kind of with that, like literary tri triangle thing, the entire thing is building towards the house. And then once you know, the house is a thing, it's all, Oh God, what are the implications of this? Like this thing is literally infesting reality with server cables. That can't be good. So many times where mm -hmm. all I all I could do or all the only reaction I had was like, Handler, please be kind to me. What is what is happening? <laughs> yeah. And correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't I, I believe in this chapter is the first time the team finds out my character's real name. Yeah, no, the yeah, diametrics is where kind of the names get dropped. Um I think we talked about this some in kind of our total post show at the end of this. The rest of you didn't realize John's real name wasn't John. Oh, yeah, that's right. I was trying to remember yeah. when that dropped, but yeah, I believe it was this, this one. Is, yeah. yeah, yeah, this was this because of the dossiers in the house. Yeah, yeah. And then then, and then we actually because before, yeah, we exchanged phone numbers and all that stuff. And like we were like, OK, we should really keep in contact, like given what's going on. Yeah. Oh, that was great, too. Yeah, that reveal, I think I remember after, like, when we were actually actively playing, um, when that happened, the team was like, wait, that was your real name? Like, even after, like, the game, like, that when recording session was over, like, wait, your character's name was this? I'm like, oh, yeah, it was. And Charlie was like, it worked out so well because it's, like, it's so fitting for a CIA guy. Like, it just kind of worked out really well, and I was really proud of that. The double <laughs> fake identity, yeah. 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 Although I rarely do actually go by Javier in the game, now that I think about it. There's no reason to, yeah, I, I try and go with the, what's the right phrase? I, I, I like the code name, so we've talked about this before, the code names are silly and ridiculous, like the fact that you are in front of normal people saying, Foxtrot, Florence, Firestarter, like, that's absolutely tabletop RPG silliness, but at the same time, like, it's fun, it makes the characters feel, more like the characters, as I've said several times, like, you learn an awful lot about the characters from what their bonds and what code name they wind up picking winds up being. Like it's, it's just like kind of telling who the characters are and what the code names wind up being because you put a amount, you put a weird amount of thought into them. And it's like this doesn't need to be this hard, but I'm gonna make it cool because I want to say something about who I am. But yeah, yeah. And, I, and actually, now that I think about it, I think Foxtrot was very fitting because it's not anything complex. It's literally just a military alphabet letter for F. Yeah. That's yep. all it is. Indeed. Firestarter seems like a no-brainer at that point. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm not saying it's a tat on the nose, but it's a tat <laughs> on the nose, yeah. I mean, it went from Tinderbox to Firestarter, so I was just like, yeah. how about this, like, fire-themed? Oh, I didn't know your T-cell name. It was Tinderbox? Tinderbox. Oh! That's that's cool. Okay, that's a good name. I literally thought, I literally thought, Agent Florence, like your your whole legal, like on your doctorate certificate was like Doctor Florence. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were being the cool one, being like, I'm gonna use my like legal name. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, I chose Florence so long ago, I can't even remember what I was thinking when I. I've always assumed it's kind of a reference to like Renaissance and stuff like that because she is kind of a Renaissance well, yeah. woman. Yeah, it's yeah. science. It's very forward thinking. It's kind of the uh, almost like it's the fetishization of the intellectual time period and stuff like that. Yeah. So it's a good name for who that character is. I've always liked it for so uh, given kind of what she's into. My my explanation for Florence was Florence of the Machine, the band, because like Florence, like the singer in that band is also just very calm and it's very soothing. And like Florence's demeanor in the group is also just very calm for the most part. Like never complete. I mean, beyond the one moment where like we had on this, you know, season where like we're like, oh shit moment, main character and all that. But like, yeah, Florence, the character has always just been very calm. So for me, Florence and Machine was just a connection. I'm like, oh, it's just probably a reference to the band. 
And then as you get deeper into their discography, you just find out that she's a witch. And then, like, Florence is slowly turning into a witch. Well, this is actually really oddly appropriate in a weird way, given her... She's got an elder tattoo! What do you mean? Yeah. We're, we're halfway there! Not even that's halfway. Was, she... This still was such a surprising thing. It was like, hey, I got this. And it's just like, who, why? <laughs> right? It's like, you have the high-paying job. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> They can't fire me. <laughs> I'm, I'm too got... important. I have a clear thought process. They're like, what, are yeah. they going to fire me? I've got you tenure. Fire me? <laughs> right? I've got tenure. I'm going nowhere. Tomorrow I'm getting hand tats. <laughs> you fire yeah. me, I'll go into the private sector. Yeah. Uh, I'll make more money there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, so I'm going to open this up now to um, if anyone in our listening audience kind of wants to ask their questions. I got a couple of questions we've been messaged in various <laughs> points of time I wanted to address as part of this. Uh, okay. I'll keep answering the emails when I get these, but if um, where can you find the operations we run? You can't. You come up with them. They are negative modifier originals, except for Last Things Last and the kind of mask reference that we talked about as part of this. Um, sorry. We're, I love the fact that we want to run this stuff, um, but they are byproducts of us trying to, you know, plead the rest of the Delta Green stuff up for anyone else to run, because, yeah. Yeah, I think unless the old... Course, I was going to say, unless, of course, Stretch Goals negative modifier custom modules... I'm not sure I'm legally allowed to do that. Uh, mm. Our Green rightfully is very right. controlling about their, about their copyright. Like, we could go super generic kind of horror module stuff, and don't get me wrong, I've thought about doing that, but I also looked into doing that, and I'm like, no, I don't want to do this to myself. Like, <laughs> Yeah. So, there actually was, I don't know if you saw it in the chat, but there was somebody, uh, was it Sundance Kid 007 had mentioned that they just started DMing Delta Green, yeah. and your last thing's last was a huge help, so... Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, it's, we, we try and keep this, despite this being, at this point in time, some, uh, high, oh, high-level Delta Green bullshit, um, yeah, the show is meant to be at least semi-informal or informational, I guess. And if you're learning something from this and getting better at being a handler, GM, whatever, awesome. Yeah, it's, it's there oh, for your enjoyment. Yeah, and I will say, like, was That's it fun. beyond the your? Was it you said your last things last? And I think the uh, what's the name of that one campaign where we went down into the septic tank and we got killed? That's last things last. That's, That's last things last. last. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yep, okay. That's last things last. The the infamous last things last, which yeah. I try very hard to make sure it, people ask, it's like, oh, what's the lesson? Is our last thing? Oh, but it's like, what's so cliche? Just run it. Everyone loves last things last. It's fun. You want to have to step away from a set for a second? But yeah, if anyone's got yeah. any questions, ask them away. We've got some other stuff we can talk about those people with that stuff in, though, if they got anything. Um, I just. Your Patreon. The... Oh, go ahead. Hmm? Go ahead. Sorry. What did you want to say? I was like, we turned last thing last into like a WWE ladder match at some yep. point, which was great. The archive of that is still <laughs> over on the YouTube channel. It's no longer on the podcast feed because the audio is not great, but it's over on YouTube. Yeah, it's the thing with the big green septic tank for its thumbnail because I thought that was a really funny image for that. But mm -hmm. uh, a couple kind of, excuse me, things. Um, on Monday, so tomorrow, if you're listening to this live and Monday May 23rd, if you're catching this on Archive, we will be launching the next um, Pick A Operation Location contest over on the Twitter page, or on the Twitter account, whatever the right phrase is. I will run till the end of Negative, uh, not, not Negative Modifier, to the end of Hawthorne's Crusade. To enter for that, then we'll do a drawing for it, so you've got plenty of time to enter. If you're a Patreon member, I may give you a chance, or I'll maybe, I'm going to have a way to give you a chance to kind of double enter into that if you so wish for supporting the show. On that same note, we have a Discord server, which is up and running, and we'll get officially announced kind of tomorrow. I'll put the link up for that probably tonight at some point. But yes, you can join. You can hang out. We're still working on it some, putting some rules and some bots in place. But yeah, if you want to ask us direct questions or whatever, we'll be there hanging out. I'm on Discord way, way more than I probably should be. From a purely self-serving standpoint, we have some new merch in the merch store. If you want to declare your allegiance to the Delta Green opposition, we have a whole bunch of stuff that uh, you can brand yourself with our not-so-friendly squid logo or octopus logo, representing our dear friends at Malin, or Milan, if you're pronouncing it correctly. But yeah...
Hell yeah. Yeah. Uh, can we, can, uh, can the players also enter, uh, the location for whatever the heck? Or is that more so just for... I'm gonna say no, but if there's, a one, if there's a location you want me to do an operation for, just let me know. You guys have more access to me, like... <laughs> It's just a DM of like, why can't, can we play at Alabama? And I'll be like, no. And then two days later, okay, here's the Alabama operation. <laughs> I just think it would be funny if we went to Quebec. That is um, <laughs> some M epic bullshit, and uh, that's a, a, a M epic is a special crowd. I <laughs> would like an op to take place trapped inside of a TGI Friday. I mean, that's a nightmare it's actually, in itself. It's kind of how next season starts, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I made it myself. But yes, uh, we got the question of what's up with the next arc. The name of the next arc is Malin or Malon, if you're pronouncing it correctly, spelled M A L I N. It is mm -hmm. French. Top you on the Googling if you want to try and figure out what that means. Um, I don't think we ever actually say it in the next arc, but it is kind of the behind the scenes name and I think the, the official name of our uh, anti-Delta Green organization. I don't think we ever actually call it Malin or Milan throughout the entire thing because it's just shadow and evil the entire time, but in my notes it's always called that and yeah. Yeah, in fact I don't think I found out the name of the last chapter until you told us the name of the last chapter after we finished recording everything. Yeah. Yep. That sounds like me. As I said, if you enjoy Diametrix's level of crazy, um, get ready. You've seen, yeah. you've seen nothing yet. Yeah. Oh, also, a really quick shout out to uh, Mage of Zine. Thank you for the follow. Got a new follower yeah. in the chat. Yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. And while we're thanking people, we got three Patreon patrons to thank while we're at this. Uh, Let's go. Yeah. Hey. A special thank you to uh, Chumplet, Nair Lethrotep, and Nathan. <laughs> Are those all the names? <laughs> yep, all three of them. I didn't know Chumplet, Nia Lethrotep, and Nathan, you know, normal Patreon mm. patron names. Yeah, that's accurate. That's this tracks. One of our patrons is definitely not messing with you three. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe just Nia Lethrotep. He enjoys the show. Sounds it's good like branding for him. Yeah. Just kind of keeping tabs on us. It's just like, it's, yeah. just, <laughs> it's a corporate kite. Is what it is. What's gonna happen is, oh, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. I was saying, Nia Lorthrotep is gonna enter the Patreon location contest and just choose the most messed up location for us. Clearly, that's why they entered into the Patreon. Yeah, he he's funding us so that we can go and mess with his operations because that's just fun for him. Yeah, we're spreading the good word of Nia Lorthrotep. Have you heard of our good Lord and Savior, like Nia Lorthrotep? <laughs> I have a tried the other. You've tried the other gods, now try the best god. And by best god, we mean one we can prove exists. I'm actually <laughs> super excited. He is um, the, the most recent official thing from Arc Dream. Iconoclast is a big thing involving him, and it's always fun when they put out something that, like, backs up, what's the right phrase, some of the kind of assumptions I've made about how Delta Green thinks about some stuff. Someone in the chat said, won't someone think of the poor little Shagoth, or Shagoth? Yeah, yeah, Shagoth. <laughs> I have a hard time writing for Shoggoth so I just think they're kind of cool like they're living plastic creatures I'm like I don't want to hurt these things they're neat and kind of wish I could be one like minus the whole brain deadness but like having a <laughs> infinite amount of flexibility is living plastic it's kind of a that, that's a cool superpower in my book like it's like being reincarnated into a jellyfish yeah essentially yeah that's but sea turtles are not dangerous to you it yeah, like. it's much being Libby's to see turtles if you're black. <laughs> yes, does it's that, like being living silly putty almost. Does that make the entire cast of small soldiers shogoths, technically? The little like no, army action figurines. They were, oh, they have to they be were liquid. melted. Yeah, it's the whole shogoth thing is they can like shape shift. And one of the cooler kind of fan written Delta Green stuff I've read out there is um, a shogoth has spread itself into the walls of a house, so it's kind of become the house. It's like the it has replaced the insulation inside of the house, basically, so it's all over the place. It was inspired by um, that scene from Sicario when they have all the bodies tied up in the walls, or kind of sewn up in the walls, which... Oh, dang. Yeah, it's it's a cool one. I, I won't go into more details, but it's, it's a fun read. I, I 
I think about it when I'm like, okay, how do I make this house messed up? If the Shoggoths could be insulation, you can think up some way of making this scene worse, Charlie. I love how the small soldiers route, instead of talking about, like, Toy Story being a whimsical Lovecraftian, like, mythos. <laughs> it's the claw! <laughs> Oh, that's true. Oh my god. We were, do we want to talk about the Eldritch Horror Nightmare that is Toy Story? The fact that you have a bunch of sentient living, essentially golems that choose to play dead and get maimed and destroyed for children enjoyment in the name of maintaining some type of masquerade of some kind? Well, the part gets it worse is if a toy dies and then later on the kid comes in to play with that toy, does that mean all the other toys are watching the kid play with a dead body? Oh no. I was, not, I was not kind to my property as a child. <laughs> the ones that were gifted to me. And Father Faustus paid the price. That's probably too much of a stretch. Uh, yeah, please, no. please don't sue us, Disney. We swear we were, we were just making parody. <laughs> I'm fine with that one. But yeah, no. Uh, <laughs> we will do another one of these at the end of Milan, which will happen probably... I don't know, probably like August at the soonest. There's a bunch of episodes. I have, it's If you were worried we're about to run out of Delta Green stuff, we're not. I already have a big chunk of our third season of Delta Green stuff written, which happened a lot faster than I thought we were going to. I guess also as part of this. We will be swapping over to a couple of quick games for a little bit. Hope you enjoy them, but that's uh, quite a distance out. They're of the same vein as this Delta Green Madness, but... No, uh, yeah. I'm not sure I have anything else much more profound to say out of part of this, except for thank you for listening. Um, the numbers of listeners have been slowly increasing. It's been crazy to see that. Uh, people are reaching out more and kind of, kind of saying stuff, which is always fun. Like, honestly, if you have any questions for any of us, use the email. We will probably get back to within a day or so, because it's just fun that way. Yeah. Uh, do yeah. we, I don't think there's, if there's anybody in the chat that has any questions they'd like to ask. Yeah, we'll give them a couple of minutes. Um, because I haven't talked to, we've not nailed down any dates if we're kind of, we're, I'm not trying to do one of our crazy extra life live streams that we, the one time we've done, our, our, I'm not trying to do it in June, so we kind of do two a year. Uh, for those who don't know what that means, it will start off as Tales from the Loop and potentially can become a Delta Green operation because we like to do that to ourselves. Yeah, the last one was, Wood, was, yeah. was a great success, I, actually. Oh, yeah. It was a lot of fun doing that. Once Brindlewood Bay is that, we're going to have Brindlewood Bay, Tells from the Loop, and Delta Green all in one game session, potentially. <laughs> yeah, and actually, since we're talking about that, um, so one of the prizes I, I'd like to give out for the Extra Life stream would be these uh, Extra Life-themed dice that I have. So we were giving out dice before, and so one of the ones I'd like to do is give out this set, so as part of the prizes. But yeah, we'll have uh, no, no antlers this time, though. <laughs> God, did I? Yeah, I don't, think of the antlers. <laughs> no, it's still in the. It's still in the. Uh, what are the? What's the channel? The uh, fan art. Yeah, the fan art. The... My dumbass accidentally tabbed over to it one day, and I was like, "Oh god, damn it!" And it still gives me weird <laughs> chills. No. Reset the countdown clock. The nightmares are back. <sighs> but yes, <laughs> I'm sure at some point the antlers will return. But yeah, that was a uh, that was still a very fun stream, and like shout outs to those who tuned in and donated and all that stuff so bro for sand actually I, sh I do have a dice set somewhere i could do oh i don't want to use the extra life one i do have a dice tower i'll roll it at some point i'll roll for sanity in real life so <laughs> <laughs> oh you lost that one firmly that's that's just keeps creeping back into your dreams it, every time you see it, it does. You're like, god damn it it does the on discord actually just do a sand check real quick <laughs> <laughs> a sand check pot <laughs> there's a couple of bots I've been looking at that I want to do with that. Like, there's one that does that, and it's not working perfectly. But mm. yeah, I, I think yeah. Uh, I, I think uh, the antlers is my version of Mr. Frosty. So, but yeah, but like an actual real life. Like yeah, actual... <laughs> but in real life, it'll haunt my dreams. Yes, which is super funny because I absolutely love things that are just covered in eyeballs. Like. When everyone's like, everything's biblically accurate. And I'm just like, yes, this is my jam. I know it's cool looking, but God, something about the way the antlers were done with it. It was just really creepy. And even now, okay, I'm going to stop talking about it. I blame Gear for the Lord. I honestly blame Gear for the Lord for that one scene with that angel with just like the thing. Mm. 
I mean, that one doesn't bother me. That one doesn't bother me. But the 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 antler idea was what really bothered me. I think it was the fact that the I eyes could that. bleed, and like they would smash antlers, and you just have bloody eyeballs on the. Bro. All right, I'm gonna stop. So tune in for our extra live stream. Despite being <laughs> four children's hospitals, they are M rated and terrifying. Apparently, yes. <laughs> more details on that. We'll have some more stuff on. The, yeah, keep an eye on the Twitter and stuff. We've got a couple more things to talk about there. Um, yeah, we got the pick location thing. We got the extra life coming up in the near future. Probably a couple other little things I'm blanking on right now. If you enjoy the show, tell your friends, support the Patreon, go buy some merch if you feel so inclined. Uh, I'm wearing the hat right now. I think it's a cool hat. It's backwards. Oh yeah. Oh, you always hear your hat back. Oh hey, there we go. Nice. I may have to go pick one up myself when I shave my head. Yeah. So, um, I guess beyond that, if there are no other questions, are we? I guess Not we're seeing anything. Yeah. yeah. I... Do you have any more in the I emails? Have... We want to kind of tell people some stuff to look out for in the next arc because there's a lot of stuff, and we can talk about a couple vague things that are in no way, shape, or form spoilers. Uh, grenades. Lots of grenades. True. It's fake I enough. Dress, I dress a lot like Firestarter. Firestarter is <laughs> like based off of my own personal fashion. Um, that's it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's um some dancing, I think, that's coming up. Technically, yeah. 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 Technically, yeah, there's a dance. One of the uh, uh weirder negative modifier Twitter posts uh originates in the next few episodes, I think. Um I stand by those words. Uh, I will not rest until I get a player to cut another player's hand off. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. There's some good stuff coming this chapter for sure. So definitely tune in. Uh, we'd love to hear your yeah, comments. I, like, yeah. It, it's, it's very weird talking about this because we're at the point where everything's been leading to this. Like, I, I, in my mind, I have the map of how it all connects up to this. And it's a wild ride. I, I, it probably makes more sense to me than those other people, but I think you guys can also vouch that, like, when you're behind all this, when you're beyond the wall of, okay, it's done, you look back and go, oh, shit, so much of this stuff led to here, didn't it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I guess if there are no more questions and stuff, that's going to be it. We can do a quick, like, yeah. uh, round table here to kind of just say, uh, kind of spit out your social medias and, and throw that out there if you yeah. want to that uh i'll guess i'll just start since i brought it up uh you can find me on mave online on all the uh, social media platforms uh instagram twitter uh which all those pretty much you just look for mave online so uh yeah that'll be me i post random shit about mexican pizzas from taco bell being back and wow and, and, sometimes, say, and wow, lots of wow. I post a lot of wow shit, but that's mainly because, yeah, I do a lot of that. But I post other things here and there. Yeah. A lot of shit posting, for sure. So. I've um, unified all of my social media handles. So everything, Finally. <laughs> everything's currently um, at Jadicus Finch, J A D D I C U S F I N C H. Uh, Instagram, Twitter, as well as Twitch, which I don't, which I don't usually super use as much, but um, you're going to find me shit posting about X-Men. Um, just recently, almost passed out from heat exhaustion at the Renaissance Fair. Uh, and, um, that was back- a fun read. <laughs> Alcohol does not replace water. No, it doesn't. <laughs> you just have to get over the hump, and then you're fine. I'm kidding. It was expensive. We learned nothing from this upcoming arc about what that sentence implies. <laughs> I didn't have about the next arc is something something Daisy Dukes. That's all. <laughs> True. Um. Uh. I really only have a Twitter, and that's just at Dylan one eight nine eight. I don't really post anything, so you can follow me if you want. But I'm not gonna say anything. <laughs> yeah, and I'm at Mordak anywhere it's important. M O R D four K. And then, Jad, I had no idea you changed all your or consolidated all of it, so I just updated your string text on the stream because I still had you listed as the was it a F K? Was it formerly known as? 
is formerly known as heterosexual. Yes. Because <laughs> that was what you told me before. I had no idea you consolidated. But yeah. yeah. I totally just remembered right now when I was like, oh, like, whatever the heck. It's, oh, yeah. I, yeah. I to, to just get that all handled. So it's Jadakus Finch now, right? Jadakus Finch. Everything is back to Jadakus Finch. Perfect. It's still, it's still like I, I've kept those handles because it's still too funny of a joke for me to let go. Um, but I've had a longer history with that uh, screen name. Yeah. Anyone got anything else profound to say? I want to say, or are we good to uh, end this? Uh, I think we are good. I mean, unless anybody else has anything they want to drop. Anybody got any SoundCloud albums they want to drop or things of that nature? Or we? Uh... I draw the line there. We won't put the podcast on SoundCloud. <laughs> we, we'll like, like, the furthest, the furthest we'll go is like a book club. But otherwise, <laughs> we'll have a OnlyFans before we have a SoundCloud. <laughs> it's just the episodes on OnlyFans. Yeah. What would what would a what would a like old god mythos OnlyFans look like? Is it just a bunch of tentacles? Uh, they exist. They're mostly on Patreon. There's a lot of not safe for work uh, elder tour stuff out there, and it is exactly what you're picturing right now. Horrifying. Yes. Mm. All right. Well, uh, on that note. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, on that curse. note. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, uh, yeah. I think uh, yeah. everyone who tuned in, thank you for tuning in, and uh, we will be here next. Uh, keep an eye out for the next big stream announcement. Um, It'll be a bit. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it'll be a bit for that one, but in between now and then, we should pr- we will probably have that extra live stream. So, uh, can just yeah. check out the, the Twitter handle, which is at, uh, was it NegModPod on Twitter? Yeah, it's the best place to get up to date news on us still. Yeah. Oh, you can also just go to negativemodifier.com that has a link tree to yeah, all so of our stuff. Yeah, it has all the links. Yep. It's a little cake we need to get to get to. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, that being said, thank you for tuning in, and we will see you folks next time. I guess. Later. Later. Later.